Welcome to a special episode of Beyond the Roundup. On today's show, we're going to be discussing record surge cases of COVID-19, including deaths in the heavily vaccinated country of South Korea. We're going to discuss what is going on here. And so, from Trial Site News, I am Adrian, and our episode starts now. So, not only is South Korea one of the most vaccinated countries in the world, but also one of the most boosted, meaning additional follow-up shots of the vaccine. Yet, SARS-CoV-2, which of course is the virus behind COVID-19, rages at record levels, leading to record deaths. U.S. health authorities have advised Americans not to travel to South Korea due to this deadly surge. So the question is being asked, is the Omicron variant evading vaccine-induced antibodies? You see, with over 400,000 cases per day, based on a recent seven-day average which included record deaths, the nation of 52 million was preparing for a fourth booster shot by the start of this year. Now, while unlike in Hong Kong, where we here at Trial Site News recently reported that they experienced record surges due to a confluence of factors, which included a lack of natural immunity, low vaccination rates among that city's elderly, and an overstretched healthcare system, in the case of South Korea, the vaccination rates represent some of the world's highest. Yet, natural immunity may be lower there, perhaps introducing clues to the current problem. For example, about 18% of the population has been infected in South Korea, while we here in the United States of America have about 25% of the population having already been infected, based on cases reported. According to the South Korean government, new cases, hospitalizations, and deaths are now well above record highs as compared to at any point during the pandemic so far. This most recent wave started in December of 2021, as the first wave of vaccine immunity waned and South Korea started to lift severe COVID-19 restrictions under a new policy called Living with COVID-19 that kicked in that November. Now, according to the South Korean government, the nation has recorded over 9.3 million cases and 12,000 deaths. What is disturbing here is a large number of cases and deaths are now occurring since the first mass inoculation and booster programs were undertaken. This, of course, as reported by the Johns Hopkins University COVID-19 Data Repository by the Center for Systems Science and Engineering, or the CSSE. Now, in a recent preprint study posted back on January 25th, Grubaugh and his colleagues studied the results of 37,877 polymerase chain reaction tests on samples collected in Connecticut over two weeks in mid-December of 2021, when Delta and Omicron each made up roughly about 50% of COVID-19 cases in the area. Their data suggests that the Omicron variant is much better than Delta at breaking through the immunity conferred by vaccines. The team also also said that a third booster shot still cuts the risk of Omicron infection by 50%, although it's also worth noting that their findings have not yet been peer-reviewed. In any case, the world's health authorities have opted to continue to vaccinate with a booster approach. And so, by February of 2022, South Korea did indeed commence the fourth dose regimen. In the meantime, while all of this is going on, Pfizer is forging ahead with the development of their vaccine in what they claim will target Omicron and ultimately all variants. Pfizer has gone on the record that it was not only working on improving its existing vaccine formulation, along with BioNTech, but also that the company could update the current vaccine to address any future variants of potential concern if needed. This as reported by CBS. Of course, this would lead one to ponder as to why this type of vaccine wouldn't have been developed from the very start. The scientific community clearly have understood that coronaviruses are dynamic and mutate. Mutant variants were expected right from the early stages of this pandemic. And yet, as of now, the current vaccine is developed only to the spike protein of the wild-type variant, which essentially means the strain of virus or background strain that contains no major mutations. 
In any case, however, there is most certainly a lot of money to be made by developing one vaccine after another, and that has positively impacted Pfizer's financial figures. We can see this by the $37 billion in vaccine sales last year alone, which, perhaps unsurprisingly, the American pharmaceutical company has since been accused of pandemic profiteering. So then, turning it back to South Korea, what about the death rate in that country? Well, given the heavy vaccination there among the nation's population, one would expect these rates to be contained. Clearly, though, the number indicates a deeply troubling trend, with new deaths shattering any past records. Yet, major news networks are representing the data quite differently. For example, back on March 19th, EBC reported a record Omicron-driven surge in the Asian nation. They quoted the Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency that 61 deaths were reported on Tuesday of March 15th. Yet, the Korean government recorded 293 deaths. So what's the deal here? Why are Western media trying to minimize the situation by reporting lower numbers? Now, according to the WHO on the matter of the Omicron variant and the vaccine, they said in an article posted back on January 11th of 2022 that for the Omicron variant, the mutational profile and preliminary data indicate that vaccine effectiveness will be reduced against symptomatic disease caused by the Omicron variant, but protection against severe disease is more likely to be preserved. However, more data on vaccine effectiveness, particularly against hospitalization, severe disease, and death are needed, including for each vaccine platform and for various vaccine dosing and product regimens. Now, the National Institutes of Health also chimed in on this matter in an article posted on February 15th of 2022 saying that it's been unclear how well T-cells, another arm of the immune response, recognize these variants. T-cells coordinate the immune response and kill cells infected with virus. They are thought to play an important role in protection against SARS-CoV-2. The findings may explain why COVID-19 vaccines protect against severe disease from Omicron, even though the variant can evade neutralizing antibodies. Now, according to this NIH article, other groups around the world are also reporting similar results. Together, the findings show that the T-cells induced by vaccines continue to recognize Omicron. Despite reduced antibody responses against the variants, T-cells serve as a second line of defense. This may help to explain why Omicron infections, while easily spread, are less likely to lead to severe disease in fully vaccinated people. As Dr. Graffoni in the article was quoted as saying, these T-cells won't stop you from getting infected, but in many cases they are likely to keep you from getting very ill. Now, in any case, this kind of death surge isn't supposed to occur in highly vaccinated places, especially those that have been boosted with mRNA-based products from either Pfizer or Moderna. Clearly, this is something worth keeping a weathered eye on, which of course, we here at Trial Site News will continue to do so. And that, my friends, brings our episode to a close once more. As always, thank you so much for joining me on the program today. From Trial Site News, I am Adrian. And I will see you all next time.